Check this out. The Anchor Solix F3800 finally arrived. I've been waiting to get my hands on this prototype unit for the Kickstarter that's going on right now. Well, those wheels are pretty nice. I'm going to try powering a bunch of appliances off this massive power bank. Plus, we're going to look at the optional PS400 solar panel. Be sure you check out the Kickstarter link below to secure 35% off on early bird pricing. The Kickstarter campaign for this Anchor Solix F3800 is nearly over. I just checked and it's raised over $5 million. If you've been thinking about getting this massive Anchor Solix portable power station to replace your gas generator, time is running out. Please use the link in the description below to find the Kickstarter campaign. I really appreciate it. This looks like something that's gonna help you out in your home, your RV, or any other situation where you need a massive power bank. I'd like to thank Anchor Solix for the opportunity to work with them on this video. Let's check out what this Anchor Solix F3800 can do. All right, before I try powering this thing up, a few first impressions. One, the casters and wheels on the bottom are super nice. Really easy to move around. It is pretty heavy, over 100 pounds. This handle that pops out, kind of like a suitcase, does make it easy to drag around. All right, taking a look at the panel here. We've got a car DC adapter or cigarette lighter. Looks like you power it on there. We've got three USB-C ports, charging phones, things like that. A couple USB-A ports. Looks like you can turn the display on or off right here. Here's the main power button coming to the side. This is, of course, your main hub. We've got a couple 240 volt outlets, 620 volt outlets. Each of these are 20 amp maximum. It looks like there's some overcharge protection so you can reset things if it overpowers. Sun's coming out on me. That'll be great for solar charging. Speaking of solar charging, here's the two ports where you'd plug the solar panels in. This is the home power port. With the optional home power panel, you can achieve AC coupling for your electrical system. This is where we plug in to a standard 120 volt outlet so that we can charge the F3800 batteries from the grid. And down here, if I want a daisy chain expansion pack so I can expand this from 3.8 kilowatt hour unit up to about 54 kilowatt hours at full capacity, this is where you start plugging those expansion batteries in. Let's see how this thing has to power on for the first time. I'm curious how much charge it has. One of the things I'm looking forward to with it, this Anchor Solix is how easy it'll be to fire up and get going for the first time. Here we go, power it on for the first time. See, is it 22% already? So it came shipped with partial charge. Because it's autumn where I live, I've got to blow the sprinkler system out to keep it from freezing over the winter. Let's see what happens when I plug this air compressor in and try to run it off this massive power bank from Anchor Solix. I've got to power on this panel. There, we got power. 24% battery charge. Let's see what happens when we run this air compressor. So the display shows me something's plugged in. Looks like it's drawn between 1300 and 1400 watts while it runs. The air compressor fired up no problem at all. The sprinklers are blown out. Pretty simple and easy. I noticed there's a little indication that something's plugged in and running off the F3800. I see the control panel also predicts how much time I have remaining, about half an hour, based on what I'm using the power bank for currently. Okay, we're down to about 5% remaining. The battery charge, it does say 0.1 hours, so that's uh, six minutes. So this thing should be stopping any minute now. Sprinklers continue to drain. We're down to 2% on the battery. This thing should be shutting off any minute now. Oh, there we go. It's flashing at 1%. We heard the air compressor kick off once the battery was drained. Let's get this thing charging back up. I'm sure glad Anchor Solix put this easy tow handle onto the massive power bank. It makes it super easy to move around. When the battery fully drained, let's plug this in and get it charging. Now the power station is fully charged. Let's try running some home appliances with it. Now the washing machine should have power. Oh, so there we go. Okay, let's turn this on and let's see what happens when this fires up. Washing machine spinning is using very little power. 35 watts. I hear water kicking into it right now, so it's filling up with some water. See this bouncing around, 23 watts, jumps up to 115. Our time remaining is also fluctuating based on the amount of power being drawn. So we'll let this thing run and see what happens. Since I don't have a home inlet box and transfer switch, let's just see what happens if I start plugging various appliances into this and running the battery. We're running about 175 watts as this washing machine is running, operating currently. I'm gonna plug this extension cord in and let's go get some kitchen appliances plugged in as well. To add some more power, I'm gonna plug the microwave in to the Anchor Solix F3800 and turn it on and see what happens. So we've got lots going on in my house today. We're also making grape juice from the grapevine today, but that doesn't have anything to do with this power bank. So let's see what the power output is on this microwave. Looking at the nameplate, I see this has a thousand watt output. I had to break out the Christmas extension cords for this. I'm just gonna boil some water in the microwave. Let's go see what's happening on the battery. 
the first thing I noticed, I don't know that you'll be able to hear, but there's a very faint fan sound coming. So this thing's kicked on the fan inside, running, uh, running air through to keep things cool. Okay, microwave's running, and we're seeing that our power output is now at 1600 watts. Our run time has also dropped down to 1.7 hours. So don't run your microwave for an hour and a half. See what happens if I turn on the clothes dryer while I'm at it. Clothes dryer's plugged in. Okay, dryer just kicked on. That added a couple hundred more watts. Oh, 400, 400 more watts now. This is a gas dryer, not an electric dryer. So it uses considerably less power than an electric dryer would. But we've now got the microwave running, the washing machine, clothes dryer. Let's see what else we can add to the mix. Okay, I've got a toaster. I think it says 600 watts on the nameplate down here. Add a little more time to microwave. Let's plug the toaster in. Get it running. Make sure the microwave's got a little more time. Let's go see how our power draw is going. We're up to 2,600 watts. We're getting around the halfway point of the 6,000 watts this unit can put out. All right, so you get the idea. So I've got four appliances plugged in and running off this power bank. I can keep plugging in more. We're only at 3,000 watts, and that power output can keep going up from here. So if I had a home inlet box, I could plug this in just like I would a generator and run a whole bunch of things off it all at once. Now, if you're installing an inlet box and transfer switch, you'll have to find where the electrical panel is in your house. It, it would be pretty easy for an electrician to put an inlet box and transfer switch right below or to the side of this electrical panel. Here's an electrical panel in a more finished state. It wouldn't be too hard for an electrician to install an inlet box either right below or to the side of this. They just need to punch in and get access for the electrical wiring into all the circuit breakers. But for the purposes of today's demonstration, I think you get the idea. Lots of plugs, lots of ports. You can plug all sorts of things into it and run your appliances all at once. We'll keep experimenting and testing how this works. Okay, I want you to listen carefully. What do you hear? All I hear is the washing machine. But if I pay really close attention down here, the fan is running to keep this thing cool. It's nothing like running a generator. This is so quiet. The washing machine is like 100 times louder than the fan on this Anchor Solex battery pack. All right, everything's turned off in here. It's silent. As I talk, it comes up to about 70. If I'm quiet, it's around 60 decibels. Let's try charging the battery with solar panels. As you can tell by these very long shadows, the sun is low in the sky. But before the day ends, I want to do a first test on these solar panels and see how it charges the F F3800. Now this will kind of be a worst case scenario. It's going to be dusk in about an hour here. So we shouldn't expect too much power out of these 400 watt panels. Let's plug this solar panel in. It's my first time trying this out. We're at 82% currently. Plugging in a solar panel now. 400 watt solar panels. I'm getting about 30 watts of power charging this thing. So this is less than optimal conditions. Uh, as you saw, we're getting about 30 watts of power coming in. Now, let's see how the solar panels do on a different day when the sun is out and high in the sky. Now you can see we're getting around 300 watts of power coming in from this 400 watt solar panel. We're at 98% and at this rate, it's gonna take 2.7 hours. So under three hours to fully recharge the Anchor Solar F3800. With the right setup, I can plug in up to 2,400 watts of solar panels to charge this guy. Okay, it's 1.56 my time. I'm gonna start a timer and let's see how long it takes to get from 94%. Hopefully we'll get up to 100%, but we'll see. Now, of course, a lot of factors are gonna come into play when you're using solar panels. Are there clouds? Is there dust in the air? What's the angle of the sun relative to the panels? Now these Anchor PS400 solar panels have a really convenient way to adjust the height. So I just planned with that. When I first set it up, I was right here on this middle setting. And on that middle angle, we're getting around 255, sometimes up to 260 watts of power. Watch what happens as I adjust the angle. With these adjusted at this lowest angle, which is more of a sun direct overhead angle, watch what happens to the power output. We've dropped down to about 230 watts now, 235. So about 20 watts of power is lost. Now watch what happens if we raise these all the way to the highest angle. The little indicators on this panel tell me this is for when the sun's lower in the sky. Okay, we've gained uh, 10, 13, 13 watts. Might get up to 270. About 15 watts were gained at changing that angle. It's important to know with solar panels, you're gonna have to move them to keep the maximum sun exposure and you're at the mercy of the elements. For example, here, I've now got some shading from trees on these panels. The output has dropped significantly, 60, 70, 80 watts of power going into the power bank. So solar panels are a great solution when you don't have a grid or you're not in a rush to worry about charging up this power bank. And the energy from the sun is completely free. So that's pretty darn amazing. And these PS400 panels, I really like. They're quite nice, easy to carry. Uh, the way they fold up and collapse, have handles on in the middle. I really like that, that they have these legs on the back that adjust to the angle so you can change your orientation depending on where the, where the sun is in the sky. It's a pretty cool setup.
So I'm impressed with these panels and think it's a great solution to get absolutely free energy into the Anchor Solix. We're down as low as 50 watts now. It's pretty much an hour on the dot since I started solar panel charging. Went from 94% up to 97%. So you can see that's gonna take a lot of time. Of course, my sun exposure really dropped as we started getting clouds coming in. Where it was up in the 250, approaching 300 watt range, it was predicting an hour to get from 94% to 100%. We're now down to six hours at this rate to fully charge. How cool is this? With solar panels on my roof, I could hire an electrician to adjust the wiring, plug this thing in so it can charge from the roof during the day, and then operate the house at night. Isn't that amazing? That's gonna cut the power bill, it's green for the environment, and just a really cool thing. And how about for camping, especially if you're an RVer? How do you power that rig? A generator is typical. Well, guess what? Instead of a noisy generator for your RV, you can replace it with this portable power station. It includes a built-in RV port to run all your appliances while camping. With the 240 output voltage and the built-in NEMA 1450 and L1430 ports, it'll be perfect for your RV. No noise and no worries. Just charge it up before hitting the road and you'll have plenty of power on your vacation. Let's try out this app. I'm really curious how it works. We can use Bluetooth control. Looks like the app shows me everything that's going on with the F3800, plus allows me to adjust some settings. One thing I'm noticing in the back, it looks like with the rubber stops and the wheels, this thing can tilt back on its side. There we go. Look at this. We got the, this handle here. It's about the size of a cooler. So with this handle on the one at the top here, two people can carry this thing up some stairs or over a place that the wheels wouldn't turn. These locking casters are super convenient. I noticed it wanted to roll around on me when I didn't want it, and they just held it right in place. Now this Anchor Solex has a huge battery expansion available. You can connect two F3800 units, plus the expansion packs, and get nearly 54 kilowatt hours of power. The Anchor Solex portable power station is a great replacement for gas generators and provides a massive backup power source for your entire home. Click the link in the description below to secure your 35% discount on the Kickstarter campaign. The Kickstarter ends soon, so don't wait until it's too late.